Hi, Don Brown here and welcome to Invent Yourself Rich. You'll notice I'm not in my workshop. All right, we are on a road trip and you're gonna learn all about prototyping. So for the next three weeks, there's gonna be three parts here. I'm gonna bring you to this great location called Bosler Pattern Works and they're gonna show us the different methods of prototyping so that you can get that idea out of your head, a little sketch on paper and turn that sketch into a physical model. Now this place has a lot of experience. You may have heard of a little company called Shopvac, all right? Shopvac uses Bosler Pattern Works to make all the models before they go into production. So, you're in good hands here. So we're gonna learn all about prototyping next three weeks, so pay close attention. I look forward to sharing this with you. So let's go inside and find out how to make prototypes. Okay, here we are inside Bosler Pattern Works. I am with Lou Bosler. He's the man behind this place, the guy that helped Shopvac make all those great looking models. And uh, he's going to answer some great questions I think every inventor has, which is, what do you do with that idea? Well, once you have that idea in your head, the first step, Lou was just telling me, you got to come in and get some sort of sketch on paper, get some dimensions of what you want, so that Lou can kind of figure out um, what he's going to have to draw next. So, so Lou, just give us a quick idea. I know you've got some things here. So you're saying the first step would be what? Come in here with... person comes in here with a pretty rough pencil sketch. This is a real rough one, but we've actually had this kind of... Uh, introduction to a new design. Right. All right. So, what we would do, we would take that rough sketch along with the discussion with the client, uh -huh. and try to interpret that and their ideas, and maybe refine their sketch with some freehand sketches. Make sure we have proper dimensions. Uh -huh. If the person is fortunate enough to have taken this to another level, where he has maybe a mock-up or something in his hand, physical shape that we can look at and, and uh, really get a quick visual of what it is. This, this particular item would represent what we have here, which is a laser gun. That's All right. cool. This is used in a dark ride. Uh, to you shoot, know, like those to laser tag at, things? Well, to shoot at targets. This is not a laser tag gun, this is a dark ride gun. I got you. Okay. Like it did so, on one of those, uh, what was that? Buzz Lightyear. Right. Game. This particular one is called a Scooby Doo Fright Light. It's a Scooby Doo ride, and this was all designed by hand, including all the internal parts. So how how they how the internal parts fit. Mm -hmm. So now, what you said is from a sketch, right? Come with a sketch. Then how do you get to this? Like what what do you get before this? Well, then after we have this done by hand, then we have a lot of measurements we can work from. Gotcha. We take the measurements, we put them into our computer, which we're going to show you, uh -huh. and then for all future guns that fire this laser, all the internal parts fit exactly the same. It allows us the capability to create a specific shape mm -hmm. or look for each separate ride. They don't always make the same ride over I and over, you. so uh, but it's the same gun, does so, the same um, function. What you're saying by once you get all the dimensions, you're sure it's going to fit all the components, you put it in the computer. So now you have a computer drawing that pretty much will tell you or any factory how to make this product. But it's that computer drawing is step one. Then you can make this physical prototype using the different processes. So let's talk about the different processes now. You've got, um, from at least my understanding, obviously we've got rapid prototyping. Correct. Right, which is a machine which, that which we'll, reverts we'll learn back, about. which reverts back to the computer. Once we have this design in the computer, mm -hmm. we can do pretty much anything with it. So that's what leads. You can't do rapid prototyping without the computer. Gotcha. So there's rapid prototyping. There's a CNC machine type prototyping. Right. right. We can again. That comes from the computer. Right. Once we have that design, we can plug that information into the into the CNC router, mm -hmm. or we can fabricate the idea by hand. It may be that step one would be fabricating something by hand to keep the cost down. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Uh, to, for the person to approve the the look or the form or the fit, not necessarily the function. With gotcha. rapid prototyping. And with CNC routing, we go to the next step, which gives us form, fit, and function. Okay. All right, so I think really what I want to do now is um, maybe take a look at that whole process of, of at least how rapid prototyping might work and some of the parts. All right, so let's go check that out. See you in a minute. Okay, so to summarize here, what Lewis said is if you're an inventor 
You come in with either a basic sketch, all right, or maybe you have a better drawing, maybe you're a little bit of an artist, whatever. Come in with a basic sketch, drawing, and dimensions. From there, he's going to turn it in to that computer drawing that you saw. And then from the computer drawing, that's how you make these basic prototypes. All right, so again, what do you need? You need a good idea, get it on paper, turn it into a prototype, prove it works, and you too can someday invent yourself rich.